is off. He's been in Alaska. So this is Brittany, our producer, the producer of Fresh Living right here. Look what the cat dragged in today. <laughs> okay, so you do the twin tested segments with your twin sister. Brooke, yes. On the morning show. Yes. You produce this show. Mm -hmm. She produces the noon show. Yes. So we thought you should meet the woman behind <laughs> the show. It, and this is so fun because <laughs> it's not like we are chatting together, you know, 10 hours of the day normally. I know. <laughs> I know. And then texting. Yes. Right. Okay. So it's your one year anniversary. Yes. My one year wedding anniversary is this weekend. Yeah. And this since weekend. I am a newbie, <laughs> I. I don't know what to do other than, you know, we've kept this cake in yes. our freezer for the past year. Right. Well, we're so going to try it. I want you to taste it. Okay, okay, I think good. we should do a little pre-anniversary. Okay. Taste <laughs> yes, yes, I should taste it before you and Sam. Yes. I think we should just dig in. Just take, okay. just take a big, big old bite you right know, off the side here. It honestly still looks pretty good. I you must have wrapped it well. I don't know. I'm a little nervous, but... I'm not nervous at all. <laughs> here goes. Okay. That piece is a little hard. How is it? How is it? Good? It still tastes like cake. Does it? I'm pleasantly surprised oh. right now. <laughs> Darn. Okay, I'll just use my hands. We should have fed it to each other. Oh, we should have. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so you thought it was almond? It's almond. It's almond. That's pretty good. I think That's it pretty actually good tastes good. Cake. Don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we wanted to talk. You're married a year now. Yes. Almost. Yes. I'm married almost 13 years, yes. which is crazy. So I want oh, you. You got frosting on your eyelashes. You said, <laughs> you said give me some marital advice. I'm like, I yeah. have none for you. Oh. And I wanted some from you because, you know, like a year in, what are the things that you hope you're still doing 13 years from now that you're doing now? Because I want to live like a newlywed. You know, I think the whole first year is just fun because everything's new. So yeah. it's like the first time you're cooking together, the first time you're going on these trips as a married couple, yeah. all that kind of stuff. But you also find out really weird stuff, yeah. like that both me and my husband are sleepwalkers and sleep talkers, that is crazy. which can create some pretty funny moments. Right. Yeah. But I don't know. What, what, do you, what do you say as some good advice? Okay, so number one, I learned that my husband talks a lot, <laughs> more than I thought. That's what I learned. And then, Brandon. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Brandon. And then I, my only advice would be, and my dad gave me this advice too, and I thought it was really good, and he gave it to me about a year ago, which could have used 12 years ago. <laughs> he said, just take it one day at a time. Oh, so true. You know, because yes. you go through hard phases, yes. and then you go through good phases, and through the hard, you know, you kind of have to ask yourself, like, am I throwing in the towel today? Well, no, you're probably not. Mm -hmm. You know, just take mm -hmm. it one day at a time, which is good when wise words, wise words from someone who's been married 45 years. Yes, yeah, I love it. That's great. Well, it's fun to have you on today. Oh, thank yeah, you. And thanks for the cake. Now, <laughs> let's keep eating. <laughs> one woman that you introduced us to a while ago is yes. Denise Drews. Yes, she is my all-time favorite personal trainer, health expert, everything. So today we get to talk to her a little bit about yoga yes. and just some of our random questions because we always have a couple random questions for Denise. Hi, Denise. Yes. Hi, how are you guys? Good. Yes. You're doing Hi. great. Okay, you just had a big, big birthday. I did. And so you went skydiving. Yes. Tell yes. us all about it. It was absolutely amazing. It's a goal that I had set for myself for my whole life. From the time I, I, I feel small. the same. I want to do it too. Yeah, I wanted to do it on my 50th birthday mm -hmm. for whatever reason. So we did. My husband and I went and there were 10 of us all together. Scariest thing I've ever done. Oh, I love it. And the most fun, the most exhilarating. Like, I'm not afraid of anything now. There's nothing that scares me now. I am so impressed. And you're looking at pictures of you right now, and it looks like you are having a lot of fun. There are no tears. No tears. Not one single. Well, the, the wind in your face kind of created some tears, but it was so fun. Oh, now, you, you said you were good. nervous. Yes. Now, if you wouldn't have been going tandem, would you have dared to jump out no, of that plane? No. You wouldn't have. No, okay. I love the fact that the guy on my back had jumped 8,000 times, right. so I felt safe. Yeah. yeah. He didn't want to die. He packed the shoot well. <laughs> it was good. It was good. But when we jumped out of the plane, he said, my favorite thing ever. Everyone says, oh, you're going to die, you're going to die. He said, count to three and get ready to live. Oh. And I swear, that's, that's the way it feels like. You jump out of this plane, and it's just like I'm jumping into the rest of my life. Yeah. You know, it's awesome. is great. So, Denise, tell us, you're a yoga instructor, yoga teacher, all of that. Yep. Tell us why it's so good for not only your body, but also your mind. Because some people are scared to do yoga. A lot of people are scared mm -hmm. to do yoga. People say, I don't want to be the most inflexible person in the room, but that's why we do yoga. So. <laughs> right? You know why you should be scared? Because you're going to tune in with some inner thoughts exactly. that maybe you have not wanted to face. And that's right. what I found the first couple of times I did yoga. That's exactly right. Real and clarity, so which is scary. Yes. 
Yeah, it, it's really scary. You guys were talking about wedding anniversaries. We just celebrated our 18th wedding anniversary Congratulations. On, uh, on Sunday. And as I was listening to you guys, I think yoga has helped me so much with the most important thing in my marriage, which is if you can be where you are in any given moment and not be dragging up the past and not be worried about the future, you can be happy. And so that's so helpful to a relationship. And that's what our yoga mat teaches us. This breath, this pose, this moment, you don't have to worry about the rest. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, show us some of the moves. Like, if, if you're not going to go to a class, but you want to incorporate some yoga just in your routine, what are some things we can do at home? Okay, so you can get on YouTube and you can just search for a simple sun salutation. So a sun salutation is just going to be a lot of breathing. So we're going to lift our arms up on the inhale. We're going to fold forward on the exhale. And you can stay there and just stretch the back of the body. Mm -hmm. We're going to come up and then we move into a favorite pose called downward facing dog. Yeah, downward dog. Oh, that's that's a toughie for me. By the end of the class. Yeah. yeah. So down dog is where we build strength and flexibility at the same time. Then we come forward into this little thing called a half series. And Denise yes. just makes it look so easy. I know. Doesn't she? It's true. Well, I've been practicing this for a long time. That's what happens when you're, you know, 50. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a sun salutation. It's 12 breaths, 12 movements. And if you did nothing else but wake up every morning and go through that sequence a few times, you'd be stronger, you'd be more flexible, you'd be more calm and ready to meet your day. So, Denise, why is breathing important in yoga? So breathing is what brings us to now. Right? So right now, you know, we're on television and we're talking and we're, I, like, I get a little anxious. Yeah. If I just take a deep breath and exhale, I can be myself. Yes. I can be who I am in this moment and not worried about all the other things. Mm -hmm. That makes me a better mom. It makes me a better teacher. It makes me a better friend. So breathing, just if we're aware of our breath, we are where we are in this moment. And, you know, a lot of the coaching that we get in TV is if you're ever get, like, getting ramped up or there's breaking news or the weather, all they say, take a step out of the camera and take a big deep breath. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you can go back in and you do feel more centered and more clarity. And, and in life, that's great. Yes, and let me tell you one more thing. Okay. It's not the breath in that's really helpful. It's the breath out. Oh, okay. Because if you think about it, when you're scared and nervous, you go... <gasps> Yeah. yeah, and if you hold on to that, you stay scared and nervous, but what happens when you're not scared anymore? You go, ah. Mm. So it's that exhale that brings us to that more calm parasympathetic nervous system, our, yeah. rest and res our resting place. Makes Love sense. Exhale. Denise, if people want to get in contact with you, where, where can they go? My website is denisedrews.com. Okay, great. Yeah, Thanks so much. Yeah, we want to be welcome. you. We do. <laughs> Always. We do. Always. Okay. <laughs> Still a lot to come here on Fresh Living. Yes, coming up next, we're getting an inside look at one of our favorite food trucks. It's called the Saucy Skillet. We're making a chicken pesto sandwich. Plus, don't let your kids forget everything they've learned in school this year. There's a new way to keep their brains and bodies healthy this summer. So every Thursday here in the circle behind Channel 2, it's Food Truck Thursday, and all the food trucks line up, and we know on reality TV we've seen a lot about these. Well, this is one of our favorites, and Brittany, this is called Rubidoux, and everyone at the station talks about not only this food truck, but the mac and cheese. Yes, so this is the saucy skillet, and Carl is going to show us how to make a chicken pesto sandwich, and he even brought me a little chef hat. So let's put on the hat. Do I look there official? We oh, well, we can adjust that size here. Okay. And then it'll even stay on. I think you have to be big, be Brittany. Too I have. You know what? I have a really big head. It's a problem. <laughs> okay, there okay, we go. Let's perfect. see how that works. Oh, I love uh, it. Oh, there we go. Okay, there so Carl, go. how do we get started with this? Okay, chicken? well, what we did is we started this for our lunch rush. Okay. And so we got a number of them going. And you see, when you put them down on the grill at 10 o'clock, and t there's a 10 o'clock. Okay, a 10 so that's how you get the pretty grill lines that's on there. That's how you get the pretty grill lines okay. on there. Okay. Exactly. Beautiful. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to take one of our Bun. tabata buns okay. right here. And we didn't what do you grab, want me to do? We didn't grab the mayonnaise. We need to hold on for just a second. And okay. The mayonnaise, which is right here. All right, so he's grabbing the mayonnaise, and we're making a chicken pesto a sandwich. Chicken cilantro oh, pesto. Oh, chicken cilantro pesto, even yeah. better. And you okay. see, instead of using butter, 
What we do is we use mayonnaise okay. to fill into the bread. And so we go just like that. And then we put the bread down on the grill. Oh, right? like yum. That. Yeah. And oh, so, yummy. Now these are getting close, so I'm going to be pulling those off. Okay. So that they don't get overcooked. We don't want anyone to be overcooked and served dry no, chicken. No, no. And so that's where we're oh, going. Oh, it smells great back here. And so that's a good thing. But yeah, our cilantro pesto, we make that with a little bit of cashews and fresh cilantro and some lime juice. Yum! And so that keeps it all nice and uh, wonderful. Okay, and then your your other uh, secret ingredient, here's your famous mac and cheese. That's the People one. People just line up for hours for that. They right? do. They do do that. All right, let's look at our bread. Okay. Oh, look, it's almost getting toasted, so we're going to twist it just like we do the other. Perfect. Uh, chicken breast there, so that's going. And then we have our bacon. That's an applewood smoked bacon that we get from Daly's, a great little bit of um, meat producer here in Salt Lake City. Oh, crap. And this so, is amazing. Yep, and here we've got our pulled pork, southwestern pulled pork, which is uh, heating up right there, oh. ready to go. That's slow roasted in our ovens for eight hours before we get it on oh, to the truck. Oh, so much good food. Okay, Carl, okay, so we're going to finish up the sandwich right now, and we'll come back here at the end of the show and taste all of your yummy food, okay? Sounds like a plan. Now I'm dying right. to taste that macaroni and cheese, but my spoon is ready. <laughs> my spoon is right here. here we go. Okay. Here Am I going to burn my mouth? You're not going to be disappointed. No, I'm, I'm sure. Here we go. Oh, okay. All right, here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Oh Amazing. Wow. So Four good. cheeses. It's, it's a good one. Mm. <laughs> my right. mom helped me make that recipe. <laughs> I can tell. You can try it. Okay, wow, that's amazing. Thank you. Now, we'll All try right. the rest in just a few minutes. So, the pump, the majority of kids, speaking of mac and cheese, the majority of kids actually gain weight during the summer months. So, we have some new ideas to get your kids moving. Next. Okay, I am here with Fred Riley from Riley Counseling, and today we're talking tackling a tough issue, and that's depression in Utah, especially among women. So, Fred, tell me, why is it so high here in Utah? Well, there's, there's a, it's hard to tell. There's a lot of studies out there right now that I've been looking at uh, that indicate uh, religious issues. Um, if you look across the country, you'll find religious, uh, more religious-laden uh, states have a lot of depression. That's interesting. So I, I think, yeah, I think the bigger issue is more of, um, it's more related to self-esteem and, and self-perception. Okay. Um, there's a, for some reason, there's a culture here that really focuses on external uh, evaluation, is what I call that. Yes, outward beauty, that kind of thing. Right, and, and what other people might perceive of, of ourselves. Okay, interesting. And so, what are the signs that uh, you may be dealing with depression? How how would a woman know? Well, women uh, primarily they become a little bit more isolative, um, concerned about what other people might think. Definitely yeah. become more fatigued, exhausted, which is a little bit different than men. Um, somatic symptoms, so sim headaches, stomach aches. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, self-defeating thoughts as well, um, and that goes back to that need for external validation. Okay, and how do you differentiate between just having a bad week and being depressed? Because, you know, if you're having a bad week, you're tired and you're thinking these bad thoughts about yourself, but uh -huh. how do you know if it's really depression? Uh, that's, well, one of the big issues with depression is that you find yourself trying to fight it off and, and saying, I just need to be stronger, I just need to persist. And, and this happening more than just a week. A lot of people don't understand depression. They try to voice their uh, concerns to other people. They say, oh, you're just having a bad week. But with depression, you're looking at persistent symptoms that happen up to six months or longer. Um, also looking at things like family history. Okay. Uh, family history, genetics plays a huge role. Mm -hmm. And then uh, situational depression as well. Um, but you're and so yeah. situation. What is, what is that? Extra describe that a little bit. Situational depression, I, I'm going to say it's a little bit different for here because there's, there's a pretty strong, consistent culture mm -hmm. uh, of pressure and evaluation, like I mentioned. Um, but situational could be any life-changing event. Um, it could be issues with a spouse, for example. Okay. Um, a big predictor of depression would be um, 
our perceived connection with our primary caregiver mm -hmm. or our, our significant other. Okay, and Fred, what would you say to the people who, maybe like me, I know I've had some friends that have gone through depression and family members, what can we do to help them? Well, I, I think we need to be aware. Um, I, I, I think people that are depressed tend to downplay, they tend to minimize. Uh, we need to be more watchful and be willing to to be assertive and say something and okay. say, you know what, uh, I've noticed that you've been isolating more. I've noticed that there's these concerns. And not be afraid to, to mention it to them because they're mm -hmm. more than likely going to downplay it anyways and mm -hmm. they're not going to respond and, and look after themselves and seek care the first or second time yes. anyways. Okay, and Fred, tell us, how can people get a hold of you? So Your phone number's up on the screen. Okay, and they can also get a hold of us at Getting Back to Life. Dot com. That's getting back the number two life. .com. Okay, great. Thank you so much for being here. You and betcha. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Tomorrow's show, we are talking Father's Day fun. What gifts he would love to have this year? And now is the perfect time to go on a hike. So we're making some healthy recipes you can take with you. That is great. And a local event that features a lot of famous faces. We will give you a preview of that on tomorrow's show. And Debbie, we forgot to mention we have the most awesome giveaway yes, ever. Yes, we do. Yeah, so it's a, a Father's Day gift package to the Homestead Resort, and it includes one round of golf. Yes. What That's dad amazing. wouldn't love that? Yes. Yeah, so get on. Enter to win. It's uh, a Father's Day gift that you won't want to live without. Yes, yeah. it's great. Okay, so we're back here at the food truck, and uh, let's see. So this is the, the saucy skillet, saucy with skillet. Carl Rubidoux. Okay, Carl, what is this? This is a cilantro pesto chicken sandwich, yeah. and you saw um, Brooke here. They are. Yeah. I couldn't get them when they were young either. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, the chicken breast that you saw Brittany cooking, there's the cilantro pesto there. We're going to take this, cut it in half. Oh, I put it with that side of the amazing mac and cheese. Brittany, have you tried the mac no, and cheese? No, I haven't tried it. I'm going to have to, Carl. Okay, here we go. All right, and Carl, how long are you here today? If people want to come down, we are here until two o'clock. Two o'clock here. All okay. right, right off the Gallivan Center. Oh, yeah. Lunch is served. Thanks lunch a lot. Lunch is served. Have a great day.